in this chapter we're going to see the transport in the plants eh? from the root soil to going up to the plants and from the plants to other parts okay so both ways from soil to the plants from plant to all parts in flowering plants a complex movement of material take place in all directions in plants materials also move over short distances that is inside the cells across membranes and even cell to cell the substances transported are as simple as water minerals nutrients to complex organic nutrients and plant growth regulators over short distances the substances move by diffusion and cytoplasmic streaming supplemented by active transport while the long distance transport takes place through hmm, or the long distance transport takes place through xylem and phloem and is called as translocation translocation organic compounds synthesized in the leaves hmm? organic compounds synthesized in the leaves are transported to all parts including the storage organ which later re-export these organic compounds when required important nutrients are also withdrawn from plant parts undergoing synthesis and are supplied to growing parts hormones and plant growth regulators are present in very minute quantities hmm? are they present in very minute quantities and are often transported in a polarized manner they are often transported in a polarized manner means of transport how do they be transported transport of different substances within different parts is an important phenomenon in case of plants okay the three important methods of transport of materials into and out of cells of plants are number 1 diffusion it is a physical process in which different solvent molecules or solute ions are transported passively without the expenditure of energy without the expenditure of energy it is the slow process and is independent of the living system the rate of diffusion is mainly affected by number 1 concentration gradient of diffusion substance eh? concentration gradient of diffusion diffusing substance permeability of membrane hmm? permeability of membrane separating them next temperature then the pressure then the density the spontaneous passage of the molecule or ions across a biological membrane being facilitated by the transport protein without any involvement of metabolic energy is called facilitated diffusion it is called as facilitated diffusion in this phenomenon the rate of diffusion depends upon the size of the substances the size of the substances that is smaller the substance the faster it will diffuse and on its solubility in the lipids okay what does that mean more the substance is soluble in lipid more faster it will diffuse through the membranes eh? more faster it will diffuse through the membranes the facilitated diffusion does not allow the net movement of molecules from low 
to high concentration low to high concentration because it will require input of energies right? it will require input of energies there are two different types of transport there are two different types of transport of proteins right? number one carrier protein and channel protein so remember that carrier protein and channel protein the carrier proteins which is bind the particular solute to be transported and deliver same to other side of the membrane that is the carrier protein the channel proteins which form channels in the cell membrane so that molecules can easily get transported this is called channel mediated facilitated diffusion eh? channel mediated facilitated diffusion the large transporter protein which create huge pores in the outer membrane of the plasids mitochondria and bacteria to cross a variety of molecules up to the size of small protein are called porins during transportation the extracellular molecule binds to the transport protein which then rotates towards the intracellular matrix and releases the molecule inside the cell so where it is happen water channels made up of eight different types of aquaparins hmm? water channels made up of eight different types of aquaparins moving on to next slide in relation to facilitated diffusion some carrier or transport protein allow the movement of molecules only if two molecules move together two molecules move together this type of movement is known as co transport right? it is called as co transport it can be three types symphote in this type of the transport molecules cross the membrane in same direction it is called as symphote another one is the antiport in this type both the molecules cross membrane in opposite direction cross the membrane in opposite direction the third one is the uniport in this type the molecules move across a membrane independent of any other molecules eh? independent of any other molecules active transport involves the expenditure of energy in the form of atp to pump the pump the molecules or ion against a concentration gradient eh? against the concentration gradient it is assumed that the active transport is carried out by the specialized protoplasmic membrane constituent or the carrier protein across the membrane in a turnover method hmm? it is called as a turnover method while the carrier protein reorients themselves in its original state in order to pick fresh ion or a molecule to be transported next protein transporters protein transporters are highly selective in nature liable to get saturated response to inhibitor under hormonal regulation hmm? they are under hormonal regulation without the constant supply of water the plants cannot carry on any of its physiological activities before discussing how absorption and transportation of water takes place in plants it is necessary to understand some basic facts about water some basic functions of water in plants are number 1 water acts as a major component of all living cells it is the major component of all living cells that is the medium in which all substances are dissolved and undergo various types of reactions okay 
Example, protoplasm. Within the cell, you have the protoplasm and it's full of water. It's nothing but water containing several different molecules or suspended particles. Within the cell, protoplasm is full of water, suspended particles. It acts as an excellent solvent and also acts as cooling system. Okay, it keeps the temperature down in plants. Water carries the nutrients from soil to the plant. Eh? Soil to the plants. Every plant, whether herbaceous or woody, consists of water. But its amount varies. Hmm? So herbaceous plant has about 10 to 15 percent of its fresh weight as dry matters. Eh? Watermelon, eh? you have seen the watermelon has 92 percent of water while woody plants have relatively very little water uh, woody plants in the wood there is not much water it also acts as a major component of seed although they appear dry uh, although they appear dry it may be a main major component it acts as a limiting factor for growth and productivity of plants in both agriculture and natural environment due to high demands of water by plants eh? due to high demands of water by plants okay moving on to the next slide what potential is known as differences between the free energy of water molecule in pure water and the energy of water in any other substances eh? any 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 other system it denotes by PSI, eh? it is denoted by PSI eh? and expressed in pressure units, Pascals, it is called as Pascals. It is assumed that greater the concentration of water in a system, greater will be its kinetic energy of water potential, eh? kinetic energy of water potential. Pure water will have greatest water potential, eh? will have the greatest water potential the best way to express spontaneous movement of water from one region to another is in terms of differences in the free energy of water. Hmm? It's differences in the free energy of water between two regions. Eh? Between two regions. So let's see what is the example. One with a higher energy to one with a lower energy. Hence the water will eventually move from the system containing water with higher potential to one having lower potential to one having the lower potential the movement of water is thus called diffusion the movement of water is thus called diffusion moving on to the next slide the amount by which the water potential is reduced as a result of the presence of the solute in pure water is known as solute potential. Eh? It is called as solute potential. It is also known as osmotic potential. It is also known as osmotic potential. It is the it is assumed that when solute or some substances is dissolved in pure water, the concentration of water decreases and the water will have lesser free energy in comparison with pure water in comparison with pure water it infers that the presence of solute particles in water reduces the free energy of water due to which water potentials also decreases eh? water potential also decreases eh? next slide is if a pressure more than atmospheric pressure is applied to pure water or a solution containing solute the water potential increases eh? the water potential increases this is equal to pumping water from one place to another uh, our heart builds up pressure for the circulation of blood in body. It becomes turbid, turgid due to the building up of pressure against the cell wall in a plant system. Uh, in a plant system, this leads to 
increase in the pressure potential it is turgor pressure loss of water during transpiration during transpiration produ produces a negative hydrostatic pressure or tensions in the xylem right? or it is the tensions in the xylem this is very important in transport over long distances in plants okay now let's see what is osmosis eh? osmosis as a phenomenon is defined as the net movement of solvent solvent molecules across a differentially and semi permeable membrane eh? across a differentially or semi permeable membrane hence the acts as an important physical phenomenon eh? it acts as an important physical phenomena that is meant to bring about the movement in the living system it's movement to bring about the movement in the living system so what happens during osmosis during osmosis the movement of solvent occurs due to the differences of water potential on two sides eh? difference of water potential on two sides water moves from a region of higher chemical potential to a region of lower chemical potential until the state of equilibrium is achieved hmm? until the state of equilibrium is achieved okay in the next slide what you are seeing is on the basis of the above given diagram you know, on the basis of the di diagram what are the observations you can uh, make out hmm? the solution in chamber b has a lower water potential hmm? as it contains more number of solute particles than the a okay solution in chamber a has a lower solute potential and b chambers has higher solute potential uh, has higher solute potential as it contains high solute particles and less solvents mm? high solute particles and less solvents that is water osmosis will take place from chamber a to chamber b on the basis of the fact that we have discussed okay through the process of osmosis always takes place from its region of higher chemical potential to region of lower chemical potential okay and that is osmosis okay at equilibrium both the chambers will have the same water potential eh? at equilibrium both will have the same water potential neither a and b will have lower or higher water potential hmm? neither of them will have lower or higher water potential eh? next slide is about the inflow of solvent and eh? solvent is water into a cell from outside when placed in distilled water is called endosmosis eh? endosmosis in which cells swell up due to the entry of water and become turgid eh? and they become turgid while the outward flow of solvent from cell into the solution is called exosmosis it's called exosmosis in which the cell when placed in hypertonic solution uh, it's hypertonic solution it tends to get shrink and become flaccid in nature uh, it becomes flaccid in nature this is another experiment uh, that slide in the picture you will see the another experiment which is usually performed in laboratory to demonstrate the phenomenon of osmosis eh? phenomenon of osmosis the steps performed during this experiment are number 1 a beaker filled with pure water is taken a eh? beaker filled with pure water is taken a thistle funnel is filled with sucrose solution and kept inverted in a beaker in a inverted in a beaker containing water what did you see 
the inverted funnel is then allowed to get separated from pure water through a semi permeable membrane okay after some time the level of sucrose solution will rise into the funnel uh, the level of sucrose solution will rise into the funnel you will observe that water will continue to move till an equilibrium state is achieved uh, its equilibrium state is achieved, achieved equilibrium state is water outside and inside the funnel is almost the same uh, the solute i am talking about external pressure is then applied from the upper part of the funnel to stop the water movement into funnel through the membranes uh, so this external uh, pressure is applied let us see what happens osmosis known to be helpful process in many ways okay it is known to be helpful process in many ways it helps the liquid to move across the biological membrane eh? the liquid move across the biological membrane it helps in maintenance of cell turgidity eh? it means maintenance of cell turgidity it plays a vital role in stomatal movement during transpiration eh? stomatal movement during transpiration it also has effects on absorption of water by roots okay absorption of water by roots the next slide is about the maximum amount of pressure which can be developed in a solution when it is separated from pure water by a semi permeable membrane is called osmotic pressure what it is called osmotic pressure this is also the function of solute concentration eh? function of solute concentration that is more the concentration of solute greater will be the amount of pressure applied in order to prevent water from diffusing okay osmotic pressure is always a positive pressure but osmotic potential has a negative sign they have a negative sign the next slide is about the maximum amount of pressure which can be developed in a solution when it is separated from pure water by a semi permeable membrane is called osmotic pressure what it is called osmotic pressure this is also the function of solute concentration eh? function of solute concentration that is more the concentration of solute greater will be the amount of pressure applied in order to prevent water from diffusing okay osmotic pressure is always a positive pressure but osmotic potential has a negative sign they have a negative sign in the next slide what we see is the plant cells or tissues behave according to the movement of water depending upon the surrounding solutions thus on the basis of the concentration of cell sap hmm, on the basis of the concentration of the cell sap the solutions are three types hmm. what are the solutions are hmm. it is very simple it is just the isotonic solution in this type the solution in which concentration of the solution is similar to the concentration of the cell sap both are almost same so there is no change occurs in the cell even after placing it in isotonic solution next is the hypotonic solution uh, hypotonic solution in this the type of solution in which the concentration of solution is lower than cell sap hmm, it's lower than the cell sap due to which the cell swells up when placed in this solution the last one is the 
hypertonic solution uh, hypertonic solution the type of solution in which the concentration of solution is higher than cell sap due to which the cells shrink when placed in the solution and uh, due to which the cells shrink when placed in the solution okay the next slide the plasmolysis is the condition which occurs when water tends to move out of the cells and the cell membrane of the plant cell shrinks away from its cell wall okay when it is placed in a hypertonic solution when it is placed in a hypertonic solution during this process the hypertonic solution causes exosmosis and the water first moves from the cytoplasm and then from the central vacuole uh, central vacuole this withdrawal of water through diffusion into the extracellular fluid causes the cell to shrink in size due to which cell moves away from the walls and the space thus formed between the cell wall and the shrunken protoplast is occupied or filled by the external solution it's occupied or filled by the external solution limiting plasmolysis is the first stage of plasmolysis in which pressure on the walls becomes reduced and get contract causing reduction in the size, cell size eh? reduction in the cell size at limiting plasmolysis the pressure potential is zero and the pressure of external solution balances the osmotic pressure of the cytoplasm thus during this state of equilibrium when flow of water into and out of the cell is same the cells are called flaccid hmm? the cells are called flaccid next slide during this stage water enters due to endosmosis into the cell and again becomes turgid allowing protoplast to attain its original shape and size as cell wall is rigid the cell do not rupture the pressure exerted against rigid wall due to the entry of water by the protoplast is called pressure potential it is called as pressure potential deplasmolysis what is deplasmolysis deplasmolysis should be followed immediately after plasmolysis otherwise the cell protoplast becomes permanently damaged it becomes permanently damaged pressure potential of the flaccid cell is zero because there is no net movement of water in and out of the cell in and out of the cell cell wall is found in bacteria fungi algae some arachne and the plant cells okay next slide is allows a plant cell to lose water without dying it can shrink or increase in size as water is available within the constraints of the cell wall mainly shown by living cells thus helps to determine whether a cell is living or dead the next is helps in determining osmotic pressure of the plants you know, osmotic pressure of the plants it proves that the cell wall is elastic and permeable right? it proves that the cell wall is elastic and permeable it is a special type of diffusion in which water is absorbed by solid particles of a substance you know, solid particles of a substance the water solubles get tightly absorbed at the surface of the molecule substance and become immobilized becomes immobilized what happens this leads them 
to increase enormously in volume, hmm? enormously in volume, the solid particle which imbibes water or any other liquid are called as imbibans. It is called as imbibans, while the liquid which is imbibed is known as imbibate. It is called as imbibate. The process of imbibation is also known as type of diffusion because in this the movement of water occur along concentration gradients and the concentration gradients what determines the movement of water. The next slide, the pressure developed by a imbibent when submerged in pure imbibing liquid is called imbibition pressure. Uh, imbibition pressure. It is due to this pressure in plants that seedlings emerge out of the soil and establish themselves. Imbibition to, to take place are affinity, one affinity, affinity between the absorbent and the liquid imbibed is essential. So affinity, there should be some affinity. Okay. Next, water potential gradient, uh, water potential gradient between the absorbent and the liquid imbibed, absorbent and the liquid imbibed. Imbibation plays major role, okay, number one, it acts at the initial stage in germination of the seeds when seeds soak and imbibe water, okay. Number two, helps in swelling of the seeds, it helps in swelling of the seeds, helps seeds to come out of the soil. It is dominant in the initial stage of water absorption by the roots, eh? initial stage of water absorption by the roots. In older times, the imbibition pressure was used in breaking the rocks and the stones. Next slide. In large and complex organism, the sites of production or absorption are far away from the sites of storage. Due to this, the substances have to follow the long path and have to move across very large distance to get transferred. For all this, some special long distance transport system are used so that the substance can be transferred easily across long distance at much faster rate. The movement of water, minerals and food across long distance is generally done by a mass or bulk flow system which operates due to differences between pressures of two points, eh? pressures of two points. The substances whether dissolved or suspended in solution are carried at a same speed, hmm? they are carried at the same speed. Such a movement is different from diffusion where different substances move independent of each other depending upon the concentration gradients of their own. Mass or bulk flow movement occurs through all conducting vascular tissues of plants and is hence called translocation. It's called translocation. There are mainly two types of vascular tissue. Like we have artery and vein, they have xylem. It is known as the type of conducting tissue being responsible for translocation of water with mineral salts, some organic nitrogen and hormones mainly from roots to aerial parts of the plants. Tracheids and trachea of xylem 
transport water in plants next comes the phloem phloem is another type of conducting tissue responsible for translocation of organic and inorganic substances from leaves to other parts of the plant leaves to other parts of the plant bulk flow can operate either due to positive hydrostatic pressure gradient as in xylem hmm? positive hydrostatic pressure as in xylem in the next slide what we see is in general all plants absorb water through roots all plants absorb water through roots however the area of young roots where most absorption of water and minerals takes place is called the root hair zone it's called as the root hair zone the root hairs are thin walled slender extension of root epidermal cell found at the tip of roots in millions these are very delicate structure eh? these are very delicate structure water once absorbed by the root hair enters epidermis from where it moves deeper into the root layer and finally reaches the xylem following two pathway one is the apoplast and symplast apoplast pathway is the system of adjacent cell wall that occurs continuously throughout the plant continuously throughout the plant except at the casparian strips of endodermis in the roots casparian strips of endodermis in the roots in this pathway the movement of water molecule takes place through intercellular spaces and walls of cells walls of cells only the water movement takes place along the gradient of root hairs to xylem through the walls of intervening cells without crossing any membrane of cytoplasm without crossing any membrane of cytoplasm there is no involvement of osmosis in the apoplast okay next this system includes the living part of the plant cell made up of interconnecting protoplast of neighboring cells and connected through they are connected through cytoplasmic strands it is called as cytoplasmic strands extending through plasma desmata it is called as plasma desmata the water that enters into the cell sap of the root hair as a result of active absorption moves into underlying cortex cell bound by a continuous selectively permeable membrane eh? selectively permeable membrane through the plasma desmata as the apoplast pathway is blocked by the bond of submerged matrix eh? submerged matrix it is called the casparian strip in the inner boundary of the cortex casparian strip in the inner boundary of the cortex therefore the movement of water and the endodermis occurs via the symplast path it is occurs via the symplast path water from the cell wall enters the cell cytoplasm moving from one cell cytoplasm to another crossing the cell membrane through plasma desmata and finally reaching the xylem element elements eh? finally reaching the xylem elements okay in the next slide what we are seeing is the translocation of water or ascent of the sap is usually upward from the root towards the top of the plant via stems eh? via stems 
example to the leaves and growing point or apical meristem and other aerial plant parts other aerial plant parts it occurs through the trajectory elements of the xylem trajectory elements of the xylem many theories have been put forward to explain the upward movement of the water to explain the upward movement of the water next all plants absorb excess by an active process and tends to build up a positive hydrostatic pressure okay a positive hydrostatic pressure within the root system called root pressure what is it called root pressure the pressure inside the xylem is caused due to diffusion pressure gradient it is called as diffusion pressure gradient and is maintained by the activity of living cells activity of living cells demonstration of the root pressure in the plants how do we demonstrate it choose a plant having soft stem on a day when there is plenty of moisture in the atmosphere and there is plenty of um, moisture in the atmosphere early in the morning cut the spread stem horizontally near the base with a sharp blade the moment cut is made few drops of solution starts oozing out of the cut stem due to positive root pressure uh, due to positive root pressure now in order to determine the rate of exudation and the composition of the exudates okay fix a vertical glass tube filled with water with the help of a rubber tube to cut end of the stem a column of sap is then is seen to rise in the tube which will be the measure of the root pressure root pressure is inhibited or reduced during reduced aeration low or high temperature hmm? aeration low or high temperature drought etc root pressure is maximum during early morning of spring and rainy season when the level of evaporation is low or minimum and decrease with the advancement of a day the magnitude of the root pressure is about 2 bar or atmospheres 2 eh? two, two bars or or atmosphere contribution of the root pressure as root pressure contributes a modest push in the overall water transport enormous transpiration pull developed by transpiration maintains the continuous chain of water molecule in the xylem eh? continuous chain of water molecule in the xylem root pressure also provides a great contribution in the transportation of water in the transport uh, transport of water limitations to the root pressure so what are the limitation there should be some limitations in it root pressure cannot account for the translocation of water or ascent of sap due to the following reasons uh, what are the reasons it cannot lift sufficient amount of water upward to fulfill the requirement of water so it is not sufficient okay number 2 it fails to play role in the movement of water in tall trees like gymnosperms they are very tall number 3 the amount of fluid transported by the root pressure is not enough in measuring the movement of water in xylem in many trees eh? water measuring the water in xylem in many trees okay what is the root pressure eh? root pressure seems to be absent in summer when the requirement of water are high when the requirement of 
water or height. Although it plays a major role in the transport of water through xylem in some plants and some seasons. But it does not account for majority of water transport due to which most plants fulfill their needs by transpiratory pull. Eh? Transpiratory pull. Plants themselves have a continuous water column in the xylem, xylem canal that starts at the base and continues up to the leaves eh, from where water is lost through the process of transpiration, through the process of transpiration. The water molecule in the water column remains attracted by the cohesive force and cannot be separated easily from one another. They cannot be separated easily from one another. Thus, there is attraction between water molecules and the inner wall of xylem duct due to which the water column cannot be pulled away from the walls of the xylem. Cannot be pulled away from the walls of the xylem ducts due to strong adhesive and cohesive forces. Hence, maintaining the continuous water column from root to the leaves. Eh? There is a continuous water column uh, pulled from the root to the leaves. Water is lost from mesophile cells to the intercellular spaces as a result of transpiration which develops strong negative water potential and strong negative water potential. There are very large number of leaves and each leaf has thousands of transpiring mesophyll cells no? which withdraws water from the xylem. Which withdraws water from the xylem. This leads to a negative pressure in the water column. It, it builds a negative pressure in the water column which expedites the upward pull over the water column. The pull is known as transpirational pull. It is like inspiration, eh? transpirational pull. Thus, the co cohesive addition force and transpirational pull all together help in lifting up the water through xylem elements and because of the critical role of cohesion, the transpiration pull is also called cohesion tension transpiration pull model of water transplant, eh? water transport, cohesion tension transpiration pull model of the water trans transport. Next, it is already known that plants do not utilize the total amount of water absorbed by them out of the 100% of water, only 5 or 10% is utilized. Rest 90 to 95% is lost through transpiration. Eh? It is lost through transpiration from the aerial parts of the plants in the form of water vapors, in the form of water vapors. The process of transpiration is carried out by the special structures found in leaves of the plants called stomata. Hmm? What is they call? They call stomata. As the process of transpiration occurs through the stomata, it is also known as stomatal transpiration. Eh? It is also known as stomatal transpiration. The stomata pore consists of two bean-shaped cells called, they are called as god cells. Both cells are surrounded by many accessory cells present in the epidermis. Eh? They are present in the epidermis. Each stom stoma leads into a uh, air space called stomatal cavity. It is called as stomatal cavity. Cellulose microfills are oriented in the god cells radially rather, rather than the longitudinal. It is radially. Hmm? In order to prevent the god cell from 
swelling and helps in opening of the stomata easily. Okay, such a phenomenal thing. During normal condition, stomata opens during the daytime and close during night time. This opening and closing of the stomata occurs mainly due to change in the turgidity of the gut cell. Eh? It's because of the turgidity of the gut cell. Opening of stomata during this phenomenon, turgidity is within the gut cells. Increase due to endosmosis. Eh? Endosmosis flanking each stomatal aperture or pore. Stomatal aperture or pore. Then thin outer walls stretch and bulge out. Okay. Pulling apart the opposite inner thick walls from each other thereby. Hmm? Thereby creating a pore or an opening in God cells of stomata, hence making stomata to get open. Okay. Next is the closing of the stomata. So what happens when closing of the stomata? When God cells lose their turgidity due to loss of water or under water stress conditions. Hmm? Water stress condition. Exomus, the inner wall being thick and elastic in nature, regains their original shape and finally move closer to making the God cells flaccid. Making the God cell flaccid. Hence, opening of God cells shut down the and stomata closes. And stomata closes. Okay. Now, in the next slide, what you're seeing is stomata vary in numbers from one type of plant to another as number one in isobilateral leaves. Approximately same number of stomata are found on the upper surface and the lower surface. Hmm? Upper surface and the lower surface. Example is equal on both the surface. Okay. Number two is in Dorsi ventral leaves, eh? dorsi ventral leaves, the number of stomata are very few on the upper surface in comparison to those found on the lower surface. Eh? Its, uh, its upper surface is more and the lower surface is lower surface. Okay. Then the next slide is there are several external and internal factors that affect the rate of transpiration. They yeah, affect the rate of transpiration in many ways. Hmm? So look at see, what are the external factors. Eh? External factors, they are quite obvious. These include the factors that influence the rate of transpiration. Eh? The rate of transpiration. Internal factors, they, are the, they include the factors that are other than the physical factors such as Number of stomata, uh, number of stomata, distribution of stomata, percent of open stomata, water status of the plant and canopy structure. It's called a canopy structure. Okay, now ascent of the xylem sap driven due to transpiration depends on the physical property of the water. So what are the physical property of the water? Hmm? We all have read it before, but here cohesion. It is the mutual attraction between the water molecule, eh? from one molecule to the other. Mutual attraction between the water molecule. Next is adhesions. It is the attraction of water molecule to the polar surface. Attraction of the molecule to the polar surface. Next is the surface tension. Water molecules are attracted to each other in the liquid phase more than to water in the gas phase. Okay. All the above mentioned three physical properties provide water with the many features. So what are the features that we are going to see here? 
high tensile strength hmm, it creates a very high tensile strength that is ability to resist a pulling force ability to resist a pulling force high capillarity ability to rise in the thin tubules ability to rise in the thin, thin tubules next slide is about transpiration is necessary and vital process hmm? it helps in maintaining the shape and structure of the plant by keeping cell turgid eh? it keeps by the cells turgid it helps in regulation of temperature and cooling effect regulation of temperature and cooling effect 10 to 15 percent it helps in supplying water for the process of photosynthesis okay ascent of the sap that creates transpiration pull for absorption and transport of the plants okay becoming too complicated right next slide is about transpiration is necessary and vital process hmm? it helps in maintaining the shape and structure of the plant by keeping cell turgid eh? it keeps by the cells turgid in it it helps in regulation of temperature and cooling effect regulation of temperature and cooling effect 10 to 15 percent it helps in supplying water for the process of photosynthesis okay ascent of the sap that creates transpiration pull for absorption and transport of the plants okay becoming too complicated right the major requirement of water for the process of photosynthesis is fulfilled or supplied by xylem vessel system right? it's supplied by xylem vessel system it sets up a pressure gradient between the outside air and the air space of the leaves air space of the leaves resulting in pulling the water molecules by molecules into leaves from the xylem okay now photosynthetic or mesophyll cells are finally to the water filled xylem in the leaf vein a pull in the lower concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere as compared to the substomatal cavity and intercellular spaces due to which water diffuses into the surrounding air water diffuses into the surrounding air the guard cells shut the stomata and become flaccid and stomata and become flaccid thereby reducing the supply of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis reducing the supply of carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis many plants in the tropical climates have evolved c4 photosynthetic system that one of the best strategy the loss of carbon dioxide by minimizing loss of water okay major amount of carbon and oxygen needed by the plants is obtained from the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide available in the atmosphere the remaining amount of required nutrition nutrients are obtained from minerals in the form of ions from soil and water from the hydrogen yeah most of the minerals fail to absorb passively by the roots because of either the when the minerals occurs in the soil as charged particle which cannot move across the cell membrane okay and when the mineral concentration is lower in the soil than the concentration of mineral in the roots so these are the two main reasons most of the minerals enter the root into the cytoplasm of epidermal cells by the process of 
active absorption which eventually requires energy for the transport of minerals in the form of ATP. Due to the uptake of ions, a water potential gradient gets developed in the root and uptake of water takes place by the action of osmosis. Specific carrier protein present in the membranes of root hair cells actively pump ions from the soil into the cytoplasm of epidermal cells. Like all the cells, many transport protein are also embedded in the membrane of endodermal cells which allow only some solutes to cross the membrane while restricts the entry of others. They restrict the entry of others. The major region where mineral elements reach are the growing regions of the plant. Eh? Growing regions of the plant, young leaves, developing flowers, fruits, seeds and also the storage organs. The minerals are uploaded from the fine vein ending into the living cells by the process of diffusion and active uptake. Diffusion, active uptake. The common minerals that remobilize are phosphorus, nitrogen, sulfur and potassium. However, minerals like calcium that are structural components does not get remobilized. Eh? They do not get remobilized. On analyzing the exudates of the xylem, it is observed that some amount of nitrogen travels in the form of inorganic ions. Inorganic ions, whereas most of it is carried in the organic form as amino acids and its related compounds. Okay. Look at the phloem transport for sources. Okay. It is the long distance transport of carbohydrate or food from the source to the sink. The source and the sink may get reverse on basis of different reasons or depending upon the need of the plant. The sugar stored in the roots may get mobilized to become the source of food in the early spring season. Okay, so sugar can come from leaves to the root and it can be vice versa. It is already known that relationship between the source and the sink is variable due to which the direction of movement of food in phloem can be both upward or downward. That is, movement in the phloem is bidirectional. Eh? In the phloem it is bidirectional, whereas in case of xylem, movement of translocation is always upward. It is unidirectional. Therefore, water in transpiration and food in phloem sap can be translocated in either of the directions. So, water goes upward, but food goes from upward to downwards. Okay? Depending upon the location of the source and the sink. In this slide, what you are going to see is, according to this hypothesis, the flow of organic substances occurs in the form of solution in the sieve elements due to development of an osmotically generated pressure gradient. Eh? 
osmotic generated pressure gradient between source end and sink end source end and sink end glucose is prepared at the source end and is converted to sucrose inside the mesophyll cells hmm? mesophyll cells cells the sugar formed in this is, is is then moved in the form of sucrose into sieve tubules through their companion cells by an active process by an active process due to this loading process at the source hypotonic condition produces in the phloem water in the adjacent xylem moves into the phloem by osmosis and develops a high osmotic pressure causing the phloem sap to move the areas of low pressure a low pressure is eventually maintained at the sink regions by withdrawal of organic nutrients through phloem uploading right? through phloem uploading again similar active process is necessary in order to move sucrose out of the phloem sap and into the cells which will use the sugar converting it into energy starch or cellulose as sugars are removed the osmotic pressure decreases and water moves out of the phloem the phloem tissue is composed of mainly sieve tube cells mainly sieve tube cells which form long columns with holes in their end wall called sieve plates okay the sieve tube cells are alive with their nuclei and organelles being closed the cytoplasmic strands pass through the holes in the sieve plates in order to form continuous filament with the increase in the hydrostatic pressure in sieve tubes of the phloem the flow of pressure begins allowing the sap to move from the phloem the incoming sugar gets actively transported out of the phloem and removed in the form of complex carbohydrates in the form of complex carbohydrates this solute loss produces a high water potentials inside the phloem and water pass out returning eventually to the xylem little complicated but listen read this twice you'll understand it hmm? in the last the experiment was given by harting okay who demonstrated the tissue through which yeah the tissue through which food gets transported and showed that the phloem is the only tissue which is mainly responsible for the translocation of food he also showed that the transport takes place only in one direction that is towards the root to prove this he removed a ring of bark up to the depth of the phloem on the trunk of a tree after few weeks he observed that the stem became swollen above the ring on the bark due to absence of downward movement of the food the bark ring must be removed carefully okay so that is all about transportation in plants hmm? we have seen how water goes up and down and food goes up and down yeah so xylem and phloem that's what we have seen great all the best kids
we'll move to the next chapter excellent